Okay, hello everyone. My name is Jamie and I am from Woods Humane Society. And we are an animal shelter in San Luis Obispo and Atascadero. And we take care of dogs and cats. And today I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about what we do <clears throat> and about what you can do to help dogs and cats that are in need of, um, of your care and concern and, and love and attention. So I'm gonna um, do my best to show you what I'm talking about here on your screen so that you can follow along and hopefully give you some fun things to think about from home, um, a little pet therapy for everybody, and also some activities and some, um, some things you can practice at home while you are with your pet, if you have one or um, just on your own. So here we go. I'm gonna try to share my screen with you all here. Alrighty. <clears throat> all right, so we're gonna talk mostly today about being kind to canines and that includes respect, responsibility, and care. I'm gonna start with telling you a little bit about Woods. As I mentioned, we're in Slow, where we have dogs and cats available for adoption, and we are also in Atascadero, where we just have cats available for adoption. Woods Humane Society was started about 65 years ago by this family over here in this black and white photo. <clears throat> this is the Woods family. That's why we're named Woods Humane Society. And I um, also want to talk a little bit about that second part of our name, Humane Society. So uh, any of you guys out there think you know what the word humane means? I'll let you have a moment to guess there. But uh, humane is actually just another word for being kind and considerate to others. So at Woods Humane Society, we practice being humane to dogs and cats, which means we think about being kind to them and causing them the least amount of suffering possible and making them as comfortable as possible within our care. Um, so we can be, as people, uh, you and I, we can be humane to one another. We can be humane to, um, to our friends, to our family members. We can be humane to other animals like spiders or lizards or birds. And we can also practice being humane to dogs and cats, which is mainly what we focus on at Woods because that is the animal types of animals we take care of at Woods Humane Society. So uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how we care for pets and, um, and then talk about how you can care for your own pets or animals around you. So at Woods Humane, society, we are kind to pets um, in a number of ways. So these pictures here will show you a few different ways that animals receive our care and kindness when they are uh, brought to Woods Humane Society. Uh, this first picture in the top left um, will show you that the volunteer here is spending some time with a cat, petting it. So that's a really important part, showing compassion, kindness, affection, attention to our animals. You can do this for your own pets at home, of course, and we make sure to do it for all of our pets at Woods Humane Society. Here, this top right picture, we have Michelle, one of our dog trainers who is working on training a dog. And not only does this help the dog get adopted, but it also is an important part of caring for an animal, just like we like to learn things and um, achieve things. Dogs like to learn and achieve, so working on training is a great thing to do with your pet. Here in the bottom center, we have two dogs that are, um, they're in a dog kennel, which um, each day these kennels are cleaned out. We, it's kind of like a dog hotel. We, f we cover the, the beds with a couple of blankets. We put two new toys out for them clean them all out and put food and water down. They also have this outdoor area in the back there that they can go out, get fresh air and go to the bathroom if they need to. And this front part here, the gate is really important because it is um, providing them with a safe shelter. So they can't get out and get loose and get lost, get hurt possibly running into the street. So they're indoor, they're safe, they're warm, they're comfortable and they're taken care of. Then this, finally, this picture over here in the bottom left corner, 
um, shows our vet team at work. Uh, not only do we care for all the medical needs of the pets, but we also provide spay and neuter surgeries for, um, for all of the animals. So they receive, they receive a, a spay or a neuter so that the animals cannot have babies in the future. We do that so that we can focus on the animals in our care and so that we can also slow down the um, overpopulation where there are too many pets and not enough homes for all of them. The whole reason why there uh, are pets in shelters is because there's, there are so many pets and there are not enough homes for all of them. So we need to slow it down and make sure that we spay and neuter our pets so that we don't have more puppies and kittens being born and not enough homes for them to live in. So now I'm gonna show you guys, hopefully I'm gonna show you this video here of um, how you can care for your own pet at home. So I'm going to attempt to switch the screen here. And I am going to share this video with you. I'm gonna try that again. While I'm doing this, you can think of a few ways that you care for, you show kindness and care for your own pet in your home. Friendship, fun, love. Pets give us so much, but unlike the I'm going to restart that there so that everybody can see. All right. Friendship, fun, love. Pets give us so much. But unlike their wild animal cousins, they can't take care of themselves. Just like kids rely on their parents, pets need people to provide for their basic needs too. We're talking about things like food and water, shelter and identification, potty needs, health care, exercise, and grooming. Before bringing home a new dog or cat, there are things you need to know to make sure your pet becomes a happy and healthy member of your family. All pets need food and water. Most animals need to be fed once or twice every day. Find out from your veterinarian or pet supply store what kind of food you should give them. Never ever give your pet table scraps. People food, especially chocolate, may taste good, but it can make your pet very sick. And here's something really important. Make sure your pet always has a bowl of fresh, clean water available so they can get a drink. Next is shelter and identification. If your dog or cat spends a lot of time outside, they need a place to get out of the hot sun in the summer or cold and rain in the winter. A fenced yard with a doghouse or other shelter is great for dogs and provides a safe environment for your pet. It is not okay to tie or chain your dog in the yard. That's called tethering and it is against the law in Miami-Dade County. Remember, dogs are pack animals by nature. Your family is their pack and they want to be with you as much as they can. It's cruel to tie them up and leave them alone outside and it can lead to aggressive behavior. Animals that are treated like a part of your family are better adjusted and will have a closer bond with you. Did you know that a collar and tag are more than just cool fashion accessories? Your pet can't tell his name or where he lives. So every pet needs a collar with their license tag and an ID tag that they wear all the time. If your pet ever gets lost, that little ID tag is just like their ticket back home to you. Ask your veterinarian about a microchip too. Just like us, pets need a place where they can go to the bathroom. For dogs, that means outside. So be prepared to take them out for frequent walks and clean up after them. No one wants to step in your dog's poop, so scoop it up and throw it out. Indoor cats use a litter box as a bathroom. And like the bathroom you use, it needs to be kept clean. You want your pet to be around a long time. So don't forget about his health care needs. Pets need regular checkups with the veterinarian, just like we need annual checkups with the doctor. If you're bringing home a new dog or cat, one of the first things you should do is to take it to the vet to get a thorough checkup, along with the necessary vaccinations. To keep your pet healthy, give them plenty of exercise. You need to walk, run, or play fetch with your dog every day. It's fun and it's good for them, and for you. Cats, especially if they live indoors, also love quality playtime with you, and they benefit from the workout. Grooming keeps your pet's coat healthy and looking great. 
Regular combing or brushing helps cats have fewer hairballs and shed less. Dogs should be brushed often and have a bath about once a month. And don't forget to brush their teeth. Seriously, tooth decay can lead to many other health problems. As you can see, pets really need us to take care of them. It's a big responsibility. They need food and water every day, shelter and identification, don't forget the collar and ID tag, a place to go to the bathroom, health care, including vet checkups, grooming, tooth brushing, and plenty of exercise. And there's one more thing to add to the list, respect and kindness. Just like you, pets have the right to be treated with respect and kindness. They thrive on your attention and affection. So make sure your pet knows how much you love them. Give them plenty of hugs, kisses, ear scratches, and belly rubs. The more love you give, the more love they'll give back to you in return. Once you're ready to get a pet, consider adopting a shelter pet from Miami-Dade Animal Services. Hundreds of lovable dogs and cats are looking for loving forever homes, like yours. Brought to you by Miami-Dade County Public Schools. Alrighty. I'm going to go back to our main screen there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that and saw some familiar sights in that video. Um, but all those elements of caring for a pet, uh, we do at, for all the animals at Woods. We just do that times about 200 animals. And we hope that uh, people who adopt from us and you guys at home with your own pets um, are also practicing those same things. I'm going to talk now a little bit about safety and respect around dogs. So um, one way that we can care and be kind to pets is by um, respecting their feelings and realizing that they do have feelings. So as this picture shows you, this dog um, here, he's kind of curled backwards. He's got his ears back on the back of his head. Um, his head is lowered. Uh, you can't really see his tail here, but I'm imagining his tail is tucked underneath his body. And this is a dog's way of showing you that he's scared. So um, this dog actually doesn't want us to pet him. He's hoping that we leave him alone. So um, one thing that I really hope that everyone can practice and learn after this uh, presentation is that dogs do have feelings and if we understand their body language a little bit better and if we think about their feelings and want to respect their feelings, then we can be kind to them and um, listen to them and, and basically hear what they have to say to us. And this keeps us safe and it also is kind to the dog. So my acronym to help remember this um, when you're meeting a new dog is PAWS before you pet. So that's P-A-W-S, like a dog paw, pause before you pet. But um, it's, it also sounds like pause as in stop before you pet. So this is how I remember when I see a dog and I get very excited and want to pet it, um, I remind myself to do these four things before I pet. So I first ask the owner for permission. If there's no owner, to talk to to ask about if it's okay to pet the dog, then you shouldn't pet the dog at all. Um, so always ask the owner, the owner can tell you if that is going to be okay with the dog, if, if it's gonna be safe, if it's a good time, that kind of thing. This keeps you safe. Then you can ask the dog by looking at its animal body language. And we're gonna talk a little bit about this and give you some real basics of animal body language so that you can see what your dog or what the dog you're about to meet is trying to tell you before you pet it. The last two steps are to wait for the dog to come to you. So rather than walking towards the dog, letting that dog come to you when it's ready. And then finally, to let the dog sniff you. So uh, it's real important to, to um, let the dog ha have an opportunity to, to get to know you with its nose before, um, before, uh, before you pet it. So letting the dog come to you, letting it sniff your relaxed fist, which is something I call doggy paw, which is just making a small fist with your hand and, and lowering it down to, towards your side so the dog can reach it and sniff it and get to know you with his nose before you pet. So these are our four steps. We're gonna start with that second step here, the animal body language. And I here have four different dogs showing you four different things on the screen. I'm gonna give you a second to kind of try to guess how are these dogs feeling? Are they feeling angry? Are they feeling happy, excited? 
Are they feeling scared? Are they feeling nervous or, or stressed out by you? What do you think? Okay, so I'm gonna start with this top left corner here. And this, this dog is doing a real long stretch. You've probably seen your dog do this before, or you've maybe done it in a yoga class. It's called downward dog. And this is one way that a dog actually communicates that it's excited, it's playful, it actually wants to play with you. So this is what we call a play bow in dog language. And it's just one of the many ways that dogs show us that they're happy. So this dog is more happy and excited. A happy, relaxed dog might show you that it's relaxed by just having loose, uh, loose ears, loose eye, or relaxed eyes, um, like maybe a tongue hanging out of the side of his mouth, uh, just real jelly, relaxed body. This is how maybe your dog looks when he's just sitting next to you on the couch or at home. So that, those are things to look for for a happy dog. This second one is a scared dog. So just like the picture we saw a moment ago, this dog is feeling scared and it's showing you that by tucking itself up small. I call this roly-poly mode because the dog is curling its tail under. It's making its body curl into a small ball and it's, even its ears are way back on the back of its head. You can see that its eyes are also very large. So we call that whale eye when the eyes are very large. <coughs> Excuse me. Finally, we have an angry, or not finally, but here we have an angry dog. And this dog is showing you that it's angry by being big and tough and stiff and tight and frozen like a statue. So this dog is not loosey goosey and wiggly and um, loose like the happy dog. And he's not curled up small like the scared dog. Instead, he's big and forward and stiff and tight and frozen. So the ears are up on forward on the head, the eyes are staring hard, the mouth is clenched, the muscles are all engaged and ready to go. He's kind of leaning forward towards you. Even the, the fur on his back, they call this hackles, sticking up like a doggy mohawk here. So this dog is in Hulk mode. He's basically trying to make himself look as big and as intimidating as he can so that you can see that he is not happy and that you stay away. If the dog got even more angry, he might show his, his teeth in his mouth. And that's a way that dogs um, either growl or silently bare their teeth and try to tell you, hey, here are my teeth. I don't wanna to have to use them. Do you see them? Please stay away from them, okay? So dogs are trying to communicate with us. We just have to listen. Then finally, this dog in the bottom right corner is our stressed or uneasy dog. So this dog is licking his nose. Um, other things that dogs might do when they're feeling stressed is they might yawn a lot. They might itch or shake. They might ignore you. They might, um, pant a lot. So these are ways that dogs show you that they're kind of uncomfortable in the setting. So maybe there's some loud noises going on. Maybe there's, it's a new place that they've never been to. Maybe it's a large crowd. Maybe you have too many friends over and it's just getting out of hand and they're feeling stressed about it. Or often dogs will feel this way, like the, if they're at the vet's office or something, at the veterinarian. So these are things you can look for as well. So I'm gonna um, show you this video now. This shows you guys um, all those four steps in kind of a different way, the pause before you pet, um, so that you can uh, take a look at, at how this would look if you were meeting a dog for the first time in real life. So I'm going to share this with you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul Owens. I'm a professional dog trainer. Today, we're going to show you how to meet a dog in a way that is both positive and safe. Sometimes dogs are very friendly and love to be petted and played with. And sometimes dogs would rather be left alone. Because dogs can't talk, we have to ask the person they're with whether their dog is friendly or not. If the dog isn't with a person, the best thing to do is leave them alone. Here are some things to remember when meeting a dog for the first time. A, ask permission. B, take a gentle breath. C, then walk along the letter C. I'll explain all three. Walk toward the person and dog, but stay about six feet away. For a kid, six feet is about six big steps. Then, ask politely. May I pet your dog? Sure, she's really friendly. Great, you have permission. Next, Take a gentle breath. 
so that you are relaxed and because that will help the dog relax too. Some dogs get afraid when people walk straight up to them. So pretend there is a letter C on the ground and walk toward the dog around that letter C. It's almost time to pet the dog. But first, turn sideways because that's less threatening. Let the dog sniff your hand and then give him a gentle scratch under his chin. As huggable as some dogs seem, most dogs don't like hugs, so just stick to the petting. If the person says it's okay, you can pet him on top of the head. Good job! Now you can enjoy petting your new dog friend. So remember, treat dogs as you would like to be treated. Be kind, be friendly, be positive, have fun, but most of all, be safe. Okay, <clears throat> so that was a good video to see how how to meet a new dog. Um, one thing I'd like to add to that is just that the the girl in the video walked toward the dog on that letter C shape, which is fine. Um, but what I do prefer, what I tell people to do is just wait where you are. So as you remember in that pause before you pet, the W step is to just wait where you are and let the dog come to you when he's ready. And that's always a really great way to make sure that the dog is feeling comfortable before you reach out um, to, to touch the animal. So if he comes over, let him sniff the dog, let, let him sniff your, your doggy paw. And um, after he sniffs you and seems comfortable, you can um, be looking at his body language that whole time. If he seems comfortable, go ahead and pet right underneath the head. That's a great spot. Um, the back is also a good good spot, but you want to avoid right over the, the head, right over the edge of the eyes. Okay. <clears throat> I am going to play a little bit of this video here so that you guys can see some of the different ways that animals show this body language. And then we're going to have a little quiz afterwards. So let me see. First, I'm going to go ahead and get this to the right spot. And I'm going to show it.
All right. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, that video, I love seeing the pictures of the real dogs showing us how they really feel with their body. Again, this is so that we can learn to pay attention to their feelings, think of their feelings and respect them, be kind and be safe around them. So now it's quiz time. I'm gonna show you this screen here. And as you can see, there's dogs A through Q here. So um, you can look through and try to find which dogs are, which are, what are the dogs telling you? Um, are they happy? Are they angry? Are they scared? Are they stressed? <clears throat> and then I'll show, you can pause it here if you want some more time. Um, and then I'm going to show you, now I'm going to show you the, the answers here. So the, the happy dogs that we saw on the last screen were A, C, F, uh, I, and M. So I'll try to put those in alphabetical order there for you. So we have happy dogs showing us loose, relaxed bodies, uh, floppy tongues, floppy ears. That was my cat sneezing there, sorry. <laughs> uh, floppy tongues, floppy ears, loose bodies, relaxed bodies. Um, maybe some excitement with some wagging tails, some um, play bow action there, showing you a toy, wiggling their bodies. Um, that last happy dog there is a dog rolling over, showing you its tummy. That's its way of saying that it doesn't mean you any harm and it would love a belly rub. So those are all happy dogs. Our uh, scared dogs here on the second row are generally trying to make themselves look smaller. Again, they're doing that roly-poly method of rolling into a ball, tucking that tail underneath their body, getting low to the ground. Their eyes will be large. You'll see a lot of the white part of their eye often. This is called whale eye. Um, maybe they're turning away altogether from you, trying to not see you. Um, or they might just be lowering their body towards the ground um, and moving slowly. So this is a, these are all scared dogs. On our third row here, we have our, ang oh, I'm sorry, we have our angry dogs. Angry dogs are stiff and tight again. You know, they have those ears forward, eyes staring, mouth clenched or showing teeth, hackles up. Um, they're really trying to show you that they're angry. And then finally, in that last row, we have some stressed dogs that are trying to show you that they're stressed by itching or panting or shaking or licking their nose. Okay, very great job on that. So now that we've talked about being kind to animals, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about pet homelessness and overpopulation and some ways that you can actually help with these problems. So overpopulation, what does that mean? It actually means that there are too many pets in our country and not enough homes for them. So in our country, in the USA, there are about 70 million estimated homeless dogs and cats. So that's just a huge number of pets that are not in homes that are not receiving the attention and the affection and love that they deserve, um, nor are they getting the, the basic care that they deserve. Um, so only about a tenth of those animals enter into the shelter each year. And only about half of the animals that find their way into shelters find homes each year. So we have a really big problem on our hands. And um, you know, the, how, how is it that we have this big problem? What are some ideas that you have? A few of the main reasons that we have homeless pets are as follows. So we have breeding that happens where people are purposely allowing their pets to have babies each year. And uh, dogs can have two litters, cats can have three litters per year. And all those puppies and kittens then need to find homes. So those are some of the homeless pets um, that happen. They also have accidental litters where maybe pet owners like you or I, maybe they uh, or me, that uh, maybe if you have a pet that is not spayed or neutered and suddenly come to find that your pet is pregnant and has a litter of kittens or puppies, then you suddenly need to find homes for those puppies or kittens. Another reason we have homeless pets is due to lost pets. So a lot of animals can become lost. Um, and if we don't do our best to make sure that they have identity on them, um, so a collar with a, a name tag, and a microchip, which we'll talk about some more in a moment, then those lost pets can become homeless pets. And um, that's a big problem. And then finally, we have abandoned pets. So maybe a pet owner that can no longer take care of its pet and either abandons it somewhere or brings it to a shelter. 
um, those pets then are needing a new home. Um, so those, these are the main reasons that we have homeless pets. But um, as kind of sad as that is, that what's, what's really hopeful about all of this is that you can help. So these are some ways that we all can help from home with our own pets or with pets you know. The easiest one, my favorite, is just that tag and microchip. So the collar with the tag that has the phone number and the address, that makes it so that if your pet ever gets lost, it can be, someone can find it down the street from you a couple blocks away, your dog can be returned to you right away or they can call you, you can go pick them up. The microchip is a great backup option for the collar because sometimes these collars can fall off or the, the tag itself can break off of the collar. So the microchip, which is this tiny little thing, it's about the size of a piece of rice here, um, the veterinarian implants it underneath the skin and then it doesn't bother them again. It just stays in there and floats in there. It doesn't even, you can't even feel it with your hand. It's just in there and it just is an identification number so that if your dog is ever lost and that collar breaks off or the, the tag breaks off, uh, someone who finds your dog can bring it to a vet's office or to an animal shelter and we can scan that microchip just holding over a scanner. It beeps and looks up the number on the microchip, which we can then look up on a national database online and we can find the phone number and address that your pet is registered to give you a call. So this is a really great, easy, safe, um, affordable way to take care of your pet and make sure they stay out of the shelter, make sure that they always have a home with you. The next best uh, thing to do is to make sure that you spay and neuter your pet. We do this, as I said, for all of the pets at Woods Humane Society. And the reason is if we didn't, they would all multiply and it would get out of control very quickly. So as in this picture, you see we have two golden retrievers to start out with. You can pretend these are your two golden retrievers. And in one year, you could start out with these two. And by the end of the year, you could have 16 dogs in your house. After two years, 128. After three years, 512. After four, 2,048. Five years, 12,288. In six years, you would be up to 67,000 dogs living in your house. Now, obviously we all love puppies and maybe that sounds really fun to you, but if you think more about it, about all the care that would be needed for each of those animals um, and all the supplies needed and all the space and the attention and the time, it really is unreasonable to think that we could care for this many animals. Um, and unfortunately, this is what happens is that um, people that allow their pets to have puppies, it, it can get out of hand very quickly, just within one year, that's a lot of puppies to be taken care of and then those puppies need to find homes eventually. So um, even at 16 dogs you're actually not legally allowed to have that many animals living in your house unless you have a special license to do so. So um, th that would be called hoarding if you get you know you get up to you know more than <laughs> more than four animals is really uh, you have to have a special license for that. And when you get up to 128, 512 animals, that's called hoarding. Too many animals in a small space and it's no longer safe for the animals or for you. And it's not legally allowed. So um, this is how quickly things can get out of hand if we do not spay and neuter our pets. And remember again, the spay, which is for females and the neuter, which is for males. Um, it's just a, it's a brief surgery. It takes a, just a, a matter of minutes for it to take place and um, this, the veterinarians do this to all of our animals at Woods Humane Society. They rec they're recovered and ready to go. The next day they're available for adoption and it really just makes it so that this, this whole pyramid of puppies does not happen for each of the puppies, each of the dogs that we're taking care of at Woods. So I'm gonna show you this short video now which shows you even better what I'm talking about. So you just got this little lady, and you've heard it's a good idea to spay or neuter your animals. But what difference can one little kitten make? Is it even worth it? Let's find out. In the U.S. alone, there are over 70 million stray dogs and cats. And every year, up to 8 million of these animals are dumped at shelters across the country. That's 8 million, which means over 20,000 animals showing up each day, or about 15 since you started watching this video. That might not be a problem if there were 8 million good homes for these animals. But there aren't. And while some of the animals find homes, as many as 70% of them will have to be euthanized. 
So how does one little cat add up to such a huge problem? Suppose this little girl gets pregnant, averaging two litters a year with about three kittens per litter. A year later, where there was just one cat, now there are 12. In another year, there'll be almost 70, then 370. In seven years, you've got 370,000 cats. That's why it's so important to make sure your cats and dogs are spayed or neutered. It also helps prevent multiple forms of cancer, helps keep males from running off, and helps them live longer. And if you're concerned about cost, don't be. Not only is the cost of spaying one dog a lot less than feeding five, but most communities offer low or no cost spay or neuter programs. Look online or call 1-800-248-SPAY to find your nearest low cost clinic. There's no better or easier way to help fight overpopulation than having your animal spayed or neutered. It means an easier life for you, a healthier life for her, and a better future for animals everywhere. All right. So that hopefully makes some more sense to you guys and helps to demonstrate what I was talking about with how things can get out of control if we don't spay and neuter our pets. Um, it really does add up quickly. And um, we see this around in our own community with uh, if you've ever seen stray kittens or cats in your neighborhood. Um, if we don't spay and neuter those, those cats, they'll have babies, two to three litters of babies each year. And, um, and then those kittens will be stray and um, probably suffering. So it's a real important thing to, um, to spay and neuter. So you can check out this website, spayslowcounty.com. Uh, we'll take you to Woods Humane Society's clinic if you want to set your pet up for a spay or neuter. And um, now I'm going to tell you guys like a few more ideas to think about before you adopt a, a pet or um, think about uh, getting a new pet. A few things to think about that that might help to make sure that your pet doesn't end up being homeless in the future is to think about if you have enough money to care for your dog for its whole life. Um, so that's a fun activity you can do if you want. You can make a list of um, pet supplies that you would need if you were going to adopt a dog today and try to figure out or estimate how much each of the supplies would cost and whether you have enough saved up to do to go buy all those things. Um, you also want to have a good reserve of savings for your pet. Um, my own pet just had a surgery uh, about a month ago and um, it was just a biopsy of a little bump on his cheek and he um, needed to have that looked at. He's okay, but the surgery and all the medicine and everything took probably a cost around $700. So that's just, you know, <clears throat> something to think about is that unknowns come up with pets and you wanna be able to care for them when those things happen. Um, how much time does it take to care for a dog? Do you have the time to care for it, train it, take it on walks each day, runs, hikes, all that, every single day? Um, how many years do your dog, does a dog live? Um, are you going to be around and able to care for your dog that long? So, um, you can estimate that dogs are going to live somewhere between 12 and 15 years. It kind of depends on the size of the dog and the health, of course. But, um, you know, some of you now might be thinking you could get, get a puppy, but you want to consider, you know, that, that, that you'll be going off to college and then who's going to take that, that dog for walks every day. So that's something to consider. Also, if you're planning to move, are you gonna be able to move somewhere where you can bring the dog along with you? You also wanna think about your lifestyle and if it fits the kind of dog that you're looking for. So a lot of people, for instance, really like border collies and huskies, um, really high energy smart dogs. And these kinds of dogs are not gonna to like to just hang out at home on the couch all day watching TV or video games with you. So um, if you are more of a, a stay at home type person, you're probably gonna want to find a dog that's more fitting to that lifestyle. These are some things to consider before you adopt. So here's a little review of how you can help. So um, make sure that if you have a pet, you have a collar on them with an ID tag, get them microchipped or make sure that they are microchipped. Check your, uh, that you have secure housing, fencing, around your house that your dog or cat cannot escape and get lost and become a homeless pet possibly. 
You can also make sure that you're not adding to the equation. So make sure that your pet is spayed or, spayed or neutered or set up an appointment to get them spayed or neutered. That way we're not adding to the 70 million homeless pets each year. And you can also adopt instead of shopping at a pet store or at a breeder. Um, you can go to Woods Humane Society or any animal shelter and adopt a dog or a cat that is already looking for a home. And that way you're really helping an animal that's already in need. Uh, make sure that you get care for your pet its whole life. Uh, that's another way you can help so that it doesn't end up in the shelter. And then of course you can volunteer and just be kind to other dogs that you meet. So um, I do wanna take you guys over to, to our website. Um, once everything's up and running again, we do have camps, we do have youth volunteer programs and um, lots of ways that you can get involved. So I'm gonna bring you guys over to our website. here at Woods Humane Society. Um, if you look just, just down a little bit, you see youth programs here. And this is where you would go to check out what we've got going on and to register. So we have, as you can see on this left-hand side, you have youth volunteer programs, which we usually have after school um, throughout the school year. Community service projects, these are some great ideas that you guys can do from home. Uh, so it'd be great project for you to be working on at home these days. We also have summer camps coming up, Critter Camp. So those are some places to check out. If you want to stay in touch with us, you can sign up for our email newsletter or you can follow us at Woods Humane Education on Facebook or Instagram. Okay. So finally, last but not least, I want to take you guys over to our adoptable pets so that you can see who we have in the shelter at the, at the current moment. And I'm gonna click on our San Luis Obispo location, which has both dogs and cats. And here you can find whatever dogs or cats we have available for adoption at the moment. So we are still doing adoptions by appointment and that's been going really well. <coughs> we also have several animals out in foster care at the moment. So that's another thing going on. <coughs> If you, um, if you click on the, the pictures here, you can read all about the pets. So um, for instance, when I was talking about lifestyle of pets, we've got Finnegan here who is a beautiful uh, one-year-old husky. And um, as you can read in this, um, in this little bio here, he's an energizer bunny. So he is a real active dog looking for a real active, um, fun home to, to, to live in where people will take him out um, every day and give him a lot of things to do. So if you're not that kind of a family or household, you might consider a dog that's more like Ford here, who is just the cutest little snuggle bug. He's eight years, he's a Chihuahua mix. And um, I know personally, he's just, um, you know, a dog that wants to just curl up in your lap and just snuggle with you. And, um, you know, he's not going to require a whole lot of, of care. So, or as a whole lot of exercise that is, you know, he'll still need his food, his walks, but they could be short walks and, um, and, uh, he wouldn't, you know, need a long run every day or anything like that. So anyway, you can always check out our adoptable animals on our website and, um, you can check out the cats as well in Atascadero. We are down to one, just one left in Atascadero currently. So poor Avalanche, he's gonna find his spot soon. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna go back to my screen here. Let's see if I can. <laughs> and Well, thank you for listening. Um, All right.
Well, <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for listening and uh, tuning in there. And hopefully you got some fun tips to practice from home. Um, let's see if my Ollie here will come to say hello. I don't know if he will. So uh, I'll lower this down to him. There he is. He has uh, been listening in himself. And we hope to see you guys all soon in person. Thanks again.